Jonathan Blow's 2016 masterpiece, The Witness, consumed my mind for weeks. I would lose sleep, play during any spare moment I had, and when I wasn't playing, I was trying to solve that one puzzle in my head. It isn't necessarily any one aspect of this game that pulled me in. As much as it was the collaboration of the art style, sound design, the fact that it doesn't hold your hand, and of course the puzzle solving. I would be stuck on a puzzle for days, weeks, even months, but when it finally clicked in my head and I solved it, the feeling was indescribable. However, there is more to what this experience is. Oddities about the world design start popping out. Quotes you hear scattered across the biomes allow you to experience the words of physicists, historical figures, and philosophers. Imagine if all the tumult of the body were to quiet down, along with all our busy thoughts about earth, sea, and air. Video clips you unlock reveal extremely vague yet eye-opening ideas told by filmmakers, presenters, and scientists. Suddenly, the seemingly random world of The Witness becomes a masterfully crafted gallery of culture, higher thinking, and the interconnectedness of life. It is very difficult to explain why and how The Witness is so profound. It seems so simple, solve puzzles. No combat, no leveling system, no perks or weapons, no complex mechanics, no storyline, no characters. Just solving plaques with mazes on them. But when the depth of its simplicity hits you, the experience takes on a whole new meaning. I knew absolutely nothing about The Witness when I bought it. Never did I expect it to expand my mind or make me look at not only the game world under new light, but the real world as well. To this day, I have not yet completed the game. I use no guides, no walkthroughs, just my own mind, chipping away at the puzzles day by day. I owe the witness that respect. Well, that's no better a solution than any of the others, is it? So, in the end, have we learned anything from this look at why the world turned out the way it did that's of any use to us in our future? Something, I think. That the key to why things change is the key to everything. How easy is it for knowledge to spread? And that in the past, the people who made change happen were the people who had that knowledge whether they were craftsmen or kings. Today, the people who make things change, the people who have that knowledge, are the scientists and the technologists who are the true driving force of humanity. And before you say, what about the Beethovens and the Michelangelos? Let me suggest something with which you may disagree violently. That at best, the products of human emotion, art, philosophy, politics, music, literature, are interpretations of the world that tell you more about the guy who's talking than about the world he's talking about. Second-hand views of the world made third-hand by your interpretation of them. Things like that, as opposed to this. Know what it is? It's a bunch of amino acids. The stuff that goes to build up a, a worm, or a geranium, or you. This stuff's easier to take, isn't it? Understandable, got people in it. This scientific knowledge is hard to take because it removes the reassuring crutches of opinion, ideology, and leaves only what is demonstrably true about the world. And the reason why so many people may be thinking about throwing away those crutches is because, thanks to science and technology, they have begun to know that they don't know so much, and that if they are to have more say in what happens to their lives, 
more freedom to develop their abilities to the full. They have to be helped towards that knowledge that they know exists and that they don't possess. And by help towards that knowledge, I don't mean give everybody a computer and say, help yourself. Where would you even start? No, I mean trying to find ways to translate the knowledge, to teach us to ask the right questions. See, we're on the edge of a revolution in communications technology that is going to make that more possible than ever before. Or, if that's not done, to cause an explosion of knowledge that will leave those of us who don't have access to it as powerless as if we were deaf, dumb and blind. And I don't think most people want that. So what do we do about it? I don't know. But maybe a good start would be to recognize within yourself the ability to understand anything, because that ability is there, as long as it's explained clearly enough. And then go and ask for explanations. And if you're thinking right now, what do I ask for? Ask yourself if there's anything in your life that you want changed. That's where to start.